when you look at this image, what is the first thought that comes to mind? Do you think of its immensity? Do you feel like it's limitless? Because that's how I used to feel when I looked up at the sky. But everything has changed since coming back from space. Growing up, I used to feel like an outsider. I never really felt like I belonged. And to cope with that, I used to be a dreamer as well. I used to play pretend in school, in class even, and I used to really live in these different scenarios, those different worlds as different characters, and sometimes different worlds and sometimes with different superpowers. And I was curious, I still am, and that's what makes me my, me, me. This curiosity has led me to become who I am today. But unfortunately, unfortunately as we grow older, we lose this curiosity. We lose the quality of being a dreamer. But we can train ourselves to look at the world with an open mind. And it all starts with belief. If your sibling, your friend, your brother, your sister told you that they wanted to become an astronaut today, would you believe in them? Why can't you be normal? If I can count the number of times I've been told that, I mean, I would lose track, of course. I was told not to pursue engineering because it would be too hard for someone like me. I was told that if I wanted to continue in the biomedical field, that I would have no opportunities in my country. And I was told that being interested in the space field was just a waste of time. But above all that, the problem, not the problem, but the, the sad yet funny part was that it wouldn't matter in the end. Because of, as women in our region, our successes are regarded as less than that of a man's. And that's what happens. So we need to use the difficulty. In improv, if you have a box that is stopping you from getting from one point A to point B, you're asked to use the box to your advantage. So you need to, if it's a comedy, you need to stumble on the, on the box and fall over and make the audience laugh. If it's a drama, then you pretend like you, there's something in the box that you need to know what it is inside, and you make the, the audience feel like they're curious and want to know what's inside. So we need to do the same thing. If a plant doesn't grow, you, you change its soil. You add more water, maybe water a little bit less. You move it from the spot where it's a little bit too dark, you put it where it's a little bit more sunny, or if it's the sun is bothering it, you put it where it's a little bit more shady. But you don't blame the plant for not growing. You change its environment. But we are not plants. We need to take responsibility. I continued to feed my curiosity and pursued engineering and really were always worked on what I thought was necessary. I always pursued and really wanted to solve the problems that I saw in front of me that I knew were necessary to be solved. I took responsibility upon myself and decided that there is something that you could do about it. I founded a company with little experience in business or economics and learned by doing. Taking responsibility is one thing, but we need to also ask bigger questions. And for me, those questions were about the universe. I wondered why do we know so little about the universe? But more than that, why is it that when we seek to find answers, we're only left with more questions? The most important question that I asked myself was that what can I do about it? So there's three pillars to what you can do when you find a problem that you need to solve. You need to do the work. You need to focus. You need to see it happen. For me, doing the work meant sacrificing a lot. For me, doing the work meant discipline even when you're not motivated. You need to find motivation from within. It does not come from the outside, and it's not going to be consistent. You need to find discipline and need to be working on something that you find and you know, believe deep in, your, in yourself to know that it's necessary. When you talk about focus, it's about really removing all of the distractions around you. For me, that meant isolating myself from the world and really focusing on the problem that I knew, I knew needed to be solved. And then seeing it happen is key. A lot of people neglect this part, but it's really important. 
what I used to do is that before going to bed every single night, I used to visualize myself inside the capsule on top of a rocket and really see myself there. I really believed it and I knew that it was going to happen. And then it happened. For launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7. Are you going to space? I'm going to space! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Five, four, command engine start. Oh god! <laughs> I don't even have words for this. Never thought that this would happen. Thank you. On July 20th, 22, on Apollo 11 moon landing, I got the call. I was told that I was about to become the first Egyptian astronaut and the first Arab and African woman to ever go to space. Getting this call was overwhelming. Imagine being told you're going to, be, you're going to space. And more than that, that you're going to be changing history. When I was told that I was going to space, I, it was really hard for me to believe that it was really going to happen. I got this feeling of dissociation. Like I was watching this happen to someone else. Like it wasn't really happening to me anymore. And like I was watching and observing this life happen to someone else. But it started feeling real, slowly. It started feeling real when I tried on my spacesuit for the very first time. It felt real when I looked at the rocket for the very first time. And I saw the rocket on the launch pad just merely minutes before we launched into space. This launch was historical not because an individual went to space, but because Egypt went to space. Because ancient, uh, we're, as, an ancient, as an Egyptian, and looking back at our history, we've always been leaders in astronomy and in science. But we lost that. And I think, I think it's time to bring that back. It is our responsibility for our generation to bring that back. This is an image of, that we took from space, from my trip to space. When I saw Earth from space for the very first time, everything made sense. I understood that the universe had been pulling me towards it my entire life. Through all of the hardships, the sacrifices, everything that I had gone through, it all made sense. It clicked. I saw that there was no real separation between Earth and space. And for the very first time in my life, I felt home. Believing in myself and believing that it was possible is what led me to become the first in something. But being the first is not the end goal. It is not the most important thing. What you do with it is. My mission in life is to continue to push the door open for others to follow, including Egyptians. And for you, if everything is possible. You need to believe in yourself more than anything. And secondly, we have to take responsibility and not live life as a plant. When I look at the sky now, it doesn't feel the same way. It doesn't feel immense. It doesn't feel limitless. It doesn't feel unreachable. It feels like I can grasp it, like we can grasp it. All of the problems that we have on Earth, we can work on. All of the problems seem so much smaller. And the impact that one individual can have is so much bigger. I urge you to stand in your power and believe in bigger things. Thank you.